I'm going to share some numbers with you and compare a couple ETFs and dividend stocks versus a non-dividend stock to show you what changed my mind about dividend stocks. Yes, no, or maybe on dividend stocks we'll talk about later in the end and I'll go through the conclusion. But if your ultimate goal is to one day have money coming in from dividends to replace your job, you really probably should pay attention to this video because this changed my mind and changed the way I invest in the stock market. If you are new to my channel, I am here sharing information on what I am doing to meet our ultimate goal of replacing our careers with passive income. If you're a subscriber, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Sorry about the glare on my glasses, but I cannot read the computer screen without my glasses on very well. It gets a little blurry. So, in this video, I'm going to show you why my mind may have changed or not changed on dividends and I'll talk about that in the conclusion but I want to show you apples to apples the best I can do comparison because I like transparency and I like to show facts not opinions and theories uh, on my channel and this to show you what and I'll show you what I'm doing with this information so for the first thing I'm going to show is SPYI the NEO's SP500 high income ETF I'm showing this because I see a lot of people buying into this and, and loving it, but again, we'll talk about why I may or may not buy this myself in the end. So the dividend yield is 11.67 right now, just showing me where I get my numbers from, and the dividend uh, growth, $5.79 for 2022, right now it's pay it always pays around. 48 cent, 49 cent, 50 cents a share. As you can see, the dividend history is always around 46, 48, 50, 49 consistently. Okay. And then, as far as the share price is concerned, I don't really care about it versus the S&P. That's not relevant to what I'm showing you here. What's relevant is the orange line. If you look, it's zero. It's zero percent since inception it's been sideways there is no trend other than sideways down and up down and up sideways not getting into explaining all these ETFs I'm going to show you those numbers so over here on market beat I plugged in the numbers and on all these uh, apples to apples comparison I'm going to show you now SPY has not been around 14 years and there's a reason I have 14 years here we'll get to that in just a few minutes the annual dividend, I, even though it's 11 point something, I give it 12. I even give a 12% yield, uh, $500 putting in, and then I wish I could change this to a monthly contribution, but I cannot on this dividend calculator. But 6000 a year is 500 a month. I've got to change this to monthly because it distributes a monthly and drip. So then calculate the dividends, this could change a little bit. Alright, right here. The annual dividend income is $26,263.23 at the end of 14 years and your ending balance is $207,082.43. That is over the course of 14 years and you've made over $115,000 in dividends over the course of 14 years. So this is what I'm trying to shoot for and show you and you'll understand in the in the end why this is important. The next one I'm going to compare is the Main Street Capital. And the reason I do that is because it has a long enough history <clears throat> to go back to 2010 where I'm actually testing from. From February 2010 to the current of March 17th, 2024. Today is technically March 18th but I started the Put information together um, yesterday. So to get the share price appreciation on Main Street, I'm using this tool that I have access to from those dates, which is um, right here, January 29th, 2010. So right there at the beginning of February, basically of 2010, to the last closing day when this was updated on March 15th. And the annual rate of return is 8.79% from way down here. Now, this is why we're here for transparency. You can see the black line, the red line 
is a straight line from point A to point B. But the black line that you see, the squiggly black line, is the share price. You can see from basically 2013 over to 2021 is pretty flat, but I'm doing an apples to apples the best I can comparison and I'll get into the conclusion of some more information. The what I want to point out the adjusted operating earnings growth is 7.46. A lot of stocks and companies share price follow earnings in most cases, but not always with momentum stuff. But anyway, so that's pretty right on par around seven or eight percent growth of the share price alone. So that's what I want to use for the calculator to compare apples to apples. And when it comes to performance, what I'm looking for is the dividends growth over 15 years. This is a 14 year test, but it shows me 15. The average dividend growth rate is 7.2 and the compound dividend growth rate is 5.96. So between six and seven. The problem with this is <coughs> Main Street Capital, you know, gives distributions out and then decreases so what you see is a lot of the growth being negative and positive like 55% right here is throwing this whole math out of whack and then you come down to negative 22 and then up to 14 and 25 and then it was down to 2 so for me to put in a calculator like right here for this expected annual dividend amount to increase it's kind of difficult and if you look at you know, seeking alpha on Main Street the growth rate over the last three five and ten the average is four to three around four percent so it's really hard to do so you know just to make it even Main Street even better I'll, I'll put in six for annual dividend amount increases which is not realistically what it would do over time because it bounces around a little bit I want to make sure everything's clear so if anybody actually watches this whole video you understand exactly what I'm doing here so it's 500 in a month and then annually 6,000 that gives 500 a month the distributions on Main Street are as well as monthly I'm gonna drip this and this is uh, no taxes taken out because I'll explain that in a minute when I get to the final finale of what I think is better than all these and calculate it and for 14 years you're looking at $260,000 and you're looking at average um, the annual dividend income being 15506 in 14 years so I'm going to show you a way to make a heck of a lot more than that in just a minute Okay, this next one I'm going to use is uh, the Swab U.S. Dividend Equity ETF SCHD. And again, there's a reason I use each one of these, um, and I'll explain that in just a second. The dividend for the calculator, the dividend growth rate, <clears throat> the three year, five year, and 10 year, right here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm trying to do an apples to apples comparison as close as possible, but you know what? I'm giving all these like main and SPYI and, and SCHD, I'm giving them all advantages. So I'm going to go with the 13 even though I wouldn't normally base that off of my predictions or, or estimates for my future money, but I'm going to say, hey look, you know what if it continues to do 13 for the last 14 years. And I use, by the way, on all these to get the dividends you'll see in a minute, <clears throat> this is the payout uh, annually right here. So. Oh yeah, and so the initial dividend currently right now is 3.38. So I'll put that in there. Even though looking back at the SCHD, the dividend yield, depending on when you buy it, they seems to always stay close to 3%. This is the website uh, here at the bottom. You see where my cursor's at. The fund inception date was on October 20, 2011, so it was not around in February 2010. What I'm going to compare with in a minute. So I'm just going off of historical data and the reason I give it 13% growth is I'm giving it over historical 13% even though we know right now it is not doing that but you know again I'm padding the numbers to try to give it a shot 
and it's going to get smoked. Watch, I'm going to show you. <clears throat> Alright, so it pays out quarterly, and I'm doing a drip, and again, no taxes on this because it could be inside of our IRA, and I'm, depending on your state and your government, your tax laws will be different than mine and your income, so your taxes will be different than mine. That cannot be apples to apples, that be apples to oranges. So again, 500 a month, 6000 and I, I give it a benefit. I give it a 3.38 because that's what it would be currently right around today, but not 14 years ago necessarily because it wasn't around 14 years. Share price, 13 uh, going up and dividend going up 13 so that will give you an end amount of an annual dividend of $9,404 if you had the money just in this fund. Ending balance $274.743.26. And and now I'll tell you something I've learned over the years looking at really into dividend stocks and dividend payers. Again, there's always uh, different things, but the majority of the time, <clears throat> this is a good rule of thumb to look at and, and learn. When I look for anything I want to invest in individually for an income, I look at the forward growth. So I can't show you that right here. I show that on my individual videos on dividend payers. Because the share price appreciation along with the free cash flow and the revenue of the company, if the company has a track record of paying out dividends to its shareholders, it usually grows in tandem with the earnings or pretty close to it, usually. You know, there's other cases, but that's usually what I see. So I like stuff that grows for that reason. Okay, the final ticker symbol that I want to use is my favorite, and this comes to be my favorite, is T triple Q. The same time frame, and the reason I'm using 14 years, is T triple Q inception was in February of 2010. So from February 2010 to March 2024. If you would take that same amount of $500 a month and invest and invest it as long as possible using your swing trade method that I have a whole video on, I'm not going to go through and show you exactly how to do that again, but the link will be in the description. And if you watched my video, you would know what I'm, how it's done with black and white rules. No guessing and if, ands, and buts. This is black and white rules of how it works. So anyway. Um, so right here you can pause the screen and I put everything it took my time to get the exact numbers correctly and put it right here for everybody who ever watches this video it's 24 months let me explain so from February 2010 it took 24 months for the first entry signal to happen times your $500 you put aside every month so you come up with 12,000 and then on January 12th to February 16th you were in the trade for a profit of 292.76% times your 12000 equals over $47,000. And this rinse and repeat over and over again. So your net signal is 54 months from the beginning of this. It doesn't mean it was 54 months from the end of the exit. No. From the beginning of January to right here, July 16th, it's 54 months. So while you're in the trade, you're just sticking the $500 a month in this scenario into the account ready for the next to add to your profit to go to your next trade. So 54 months times 500 is 27,000 plus your 47,131 right here equals 74,000 dollars over 74,000 right here. Okay, follow my cursor. And then um, that trade on July 16th to December 18th was an 88.32% profit. Times that $74,131.20 equals $139,603. And then 33 months from the beginning of this entry to entry. So that's months is from entry to entry, okay? $500 times 33 is 16 .5. Then you add that to the money you made and everything else you put in so far. So it would be 165 plus 139.603 equals 156.103. I understand how all this works because I've studied it and done enough pen and paper with this. But I'm trying to explain it so if you're watching this and you're looking at this, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. <coughs> so your next signal is on April 19th to February 22nd. 217.51% profit times 156 thousand one hundred three dollars equals four hundred ninety five thousand six hundred forty five dollars and then forty seven months from the that interest signal you're putting aside five hundred dollars a month so that's twenty three thousand five hundred 
plus that $495,645 equals $519,145. And the last signal was given in March of 2023. Unknown on the exit signal, but however, I will tell you it will be profitable. So far, up until March 17, 2024, it's up 104.38%. So 104.38% times your 100 your times $519,145 equals $1,061,029.34. So 12 months since the last interest signal, so 12 times 500 is $6,000. So $6,000 plus that over a million dollars equals $1,067,029.34. That is a total of 170 months times 500 will give you $85,000. So this scenario you only have $85 invested in this and that is an increase of 1,148% return. If the profits got taxed at 15%, now I'm going to speak on taxes. Now these returns right here would be if you have it in an IRA. It doesn't matter if it's a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA because IRAs do not get taxed until you pull money out of them into retirement. If it's a traditional and if it's a Roth and you meet qualifications it won't get taxed at all. So to keep apples to apples, I put everything that I showed without taxes. Okay, now I put the taxes at 15%. Depending on what country you live in, your taxes are different. Depending on what state you're in, your taxes are different. Depending on your income level, your taxes are different. Depending on the tax bracket. So I cannot put an apples to apples tax because your taxes and my taxes will be different. So I just said 15%. The total would be $787,225. That's an increase of 826%. So if you had this in a regular brokerage account and you had to pay taxes on all your profits, every time you got a profit, I taxed it at 15% and then kept up with this math. And I come up with 787. So you're looking at 787,000 versus over a million. So you're looking at, well, I think I figured up over 270,000 or 280, $270,000 difference here. So my point is you get taxed on it. Or you may not get taxed on it, depending on where you, what accounts you put it in and what country you live in. But anyway, you'll make a lot more money taking this tree triple Q instead of buying any of these dividend stocks or ETFs. It doesn't matter which one. You'll make more money doing this to build up to your goals of living on income on, from dividends so you can retire. And then I'll show you the numbers of what the big difference is coming up next slide. Okay, now I'm trying to wrap things up here and show you why I picked SPYI and, and Maine and SCHD. SPYI kind of covers all your cover call ETFs or anything with a real high yield, um, around 12% or so, with a little growth to it at all. And I just want to show what it would look like over the course of 14 years, along with Maine, which shows you a, it's a BDC, but it also shows you anything with a big yield because it has a pretty large yield sometimes around seven or eight percent and it has some growth to it and a little bit of history so I'm showing how that would do over that 14 year time frame and then SCHD this encompasses some of my favorite type of stuff right here this is your dividend growers which meets the dividend chowder rule if you don't know what that is I'll talk about it on my channel basically it has fast growth with the earnings and the dividends. So your dividend yield may be small, around 3%, but it grows it fast. So you make money to outpace inflation over the years. So this kind of encompasses everything. This here would be like your Lowe's, your Home Depot, and stuff like this. This here would be your higher yield stuff that grows. And it's hard to find a lot of yields. But anyway, my point is I'm trying to cover all of them and show. So investing the same amount with realistic numbers and data from these holdings. We already discussed annual dividends for each one. You're looking at 26, a little over 26,000 on SPYI and a little over 15 in Maine and 9 in SEHD. This should kind of show you something over 14 years. So your ending balance is 207,000, 260,000, 274,000. Again, this will show you something. This is more, um, be your share price appreciation, a little less on the dividend growth, a little more on the dividends, less on the share price appreciation and this is kind of in between. Now I'll have a place depending on you, your age, and your, your budget and goals. I can't determine that for you. I know what determines it for us. But all of these to me, people buying them that's not in retirement now with a big nest egg to get income, you're wasting your time. 
and you're putting yourself at unnecessary risk of stuff. That's really not an opinion. That's that's a fact. So the results of the new annual dividend income amount is focusing on growth only first than dividends. You can like dividends and growth, but you can also you don't have to do one or the other. That's the whole point. So using T triple Q, if you was to make over a mean, which it would have, um, using my swing trading method that I show on my channel, there'll be links in the description below. Exactly what I do: black and white rules, facts, not opinions, not what would happen. Notice what you know. This is facts. Same amount of money, five hundred a month would have made over a million dollars that I showed and then you take that money and then you wanted to invest in income to retire on then you could buy your shares of a bunch of different things I wouldn't buy all of SPYI but I'm just showing an example you buy a basket of different solid dividend payers and then your income will be a lot more than this so just for example you're only getting 26,000 SPYI TQQ you would sell that and the over a million dollars you have would buy you enough shares times how much it's paying out will get you a current annual dividend over 123000 That's how this math comes up. T triple Q share it, buy, sell the shares, buy shares of Maine and then the more shares you own the more dividends you get. I mean right? We should understand that right? So the same way 66000 versus 15000 SCHD 36,000 versus 9,000 big difference I don't care what kind of dividends you like I don't care if it's Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Johnson Johnson, Lowe's, Home Depot, J Jeppy, JepQ, SPY, Tesla, all those new things with your Max, Neos, whatever it doesn't matter focusing on growth and using a three times leverage ETF correctly as I show on my channel could make you a lot will I don't see how it can't it will make you a lot more money to invest into dividend stocks later in life and then you'll have more income versus taking forever and years to try to get to your goal or trying to live on a smaller budget this will take less money and less time to get to your goals that's my whole point okay my conclusion and final thoughts on this whole thing if you watch this whole video thank you for watching the whole video and if you didn't well, you don't see this then too bad but I'm sharing any information I can come up with to my viewers and sometimes I get discouraged because of the <laughs> I watch some channels get a lot of viewers and it's like their information to me is just whatever anyway I'm giving out real information to help people out and I want to help people out out there and hopefully there's some young men and women out there to listen to this and can see and put the numbers to paper and do whatever you're comfortable with don't do it just because I'm doing it but I'm sharing what I do for us for our portfolio to be our goals so the conclusion is I want to build up our capital as fast as possible but safe and trust me even though I'm using T triple Q as a leverage ETF I got safety in mind black and white rules and I back tested it for decades and um, then the conclusion is then we take the money and make passive income via many different types of dividend or distribution type stocks and ETFs there's a variety out there and you can build up a portfolio to be safe to do that to meet your goals so that that in a nutshell is the conclusion now I will always put videos up on my channel of dividend stocks and you may wonder why I do that if I'm not buying dividend stocks because I think it's important for you to understand what a safe dividend stock is before you get to the point where you need to live off of it and learn the hard way we don't have the learning curve you don't want to have when you quit your job and try to live off of this stuff because trust me I read stuff all the time I look at people's stuff on Facebook or YouTube or this on the internet and the stuff they invest in I scratch my head but it's their money and their life I don't get it there's some high risk stuff they're doing out there just makes absolutely no sense to me it's like the last thing I want in retirement or once I quit my job is a couple years down the road something going belly up or making a big pay cut in my income and that's all I try to avoid and try to share so some people always want 8% or 10% they don't want to look at a 3% growing dividend and that's on them I hope to have enough money where I don't have to force myself to have my whole portfolio going for 10% yield I want to have my portfolio balanced with growing dividend as well so I can outrun inflation as I get older anyway you'll see that as you watch my, my videos thank you like comment subscribe and share